from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. This for real, right? We're just this is the show. Okay, <laughs> good. Show. Show. Hey, good morning, everybody. We've got a weird, eclectic mix of people today. <laughs> it's the bro discussion. show, but Erica's just off camera. She's ready to spoil the party. Mm -hmm. We'll talk to her coming up in just a second. Good morning. It is Wednesday, December twenty-first. Good to have the guys here this morning. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Well, love these guys, the GMSA crew, oh, hanging amazing. out on Wednesday right before uh, you love Christmas us? holiday. I do love you guys. Oh wow, I got a lot of man love, bro love for you guys. Yeah. I <laughs> I, I like, I'll speak like, for everyone. We we love you too, RJ. Oh, we love you too. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we did. did you just call us weird though? I, 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 did I say weird eclectic mix? Yeah. Delete weird. It's all okay. about the. I, I like the mix up though. Well, here's the mix. Stand up here now, Justin. Oh, again. Boy. Here yep. we go. I'm gonna have there to it is. Down. Yep. <laughs> yep. And there's your starting lineup for the next game with the San Antonio Spurs. Right here. We could probably do better, maybe. <laughs> or worse. Nine and twenty. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. Three right, point guards. I don't know about that love, anymore. There there know about that love yeah. anymore. It's yeah. gonna be okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Switching gears, let's jump yeah. into the forecast with Justin. And if you're just now joining us for the first time this morning, everybody and their brother and sister knows it's going to be really cold this week. <laughs> yep. Let's talk about extreme wind chills. Yeah, so we, we know the cold's coming at teens Friday morning, but the wind is also going to be a big factor here. We're going to get some gusty winds up to potentially 45 miles per hour. These are gusts by the time we get into tomorrow evening, and that's going to push wind chills into pretty uh, extreme territories once we get into Friday morning. But we've also got to think about you know, securing things in your yard, the trash can, uh, your Christmas decorations. Those are the kind of things that can blow away with those kind of winds, so beware. Uh, visibility this morning, we haven't had a whole lot of issues with fog, but we are noticing a few places dropping down to about one and a half miles there. It's Stinson. We've seen a few spots briefly get down uh, with some lower visibility with some fog. I don't suspect this will last very long, and we're really not seeing all that much of it, but I do need to point it out. As we go outside for you, we've got uh, cloudy skies, at least at the moment, 41. Dew point is at 38. East northeasterly winds at about 6. And as we look across the state and the country, look at all these watches and advisories and warnings. Here where we are, we have wind chill watches and hard freeze watches in effect. As I said, we know that by now. We've talked about this, just how cold it's going to get as we get into Thursday night and Friday morning. But this goes to show you that this uh, this system it covers a lot of real estate and really all the active weather as far as snow and that thing, uh, those sort of things, uh, is all going to be well to our north. Most of Texas stays dry, just cold. As we look at the forecast, 50 degrees noontime, 53 by 1 o'clock, 56 by 3 p.m. We're up to 57 this afternoon. We'll talk much more about that frontal boundary, but it looks like uh, we are picking up on some pretty good fog, Stephen, as yeah. uh, you look at Transguide there. Yeah, a little bit further up there on I-10, Justin. Uh, yeah, it almost looks like drivers that are making their way through here. There's not a lot of activity out there, but it looks like they're driving off into the unknown. So creepy stuff. But still, uh, drive carefully out there. Make sure to uh, check your vehicle if you have any road travel plans this weekend. We know a lot of folks are already planning to hit the roadways and maybe head out of town for the holidays. But let's show you what you can expect back here in town, the metropolitan area. Green on the screen, and that's what we'd like to see as we are getting ready to see some people maybe head out of town. But we did have our fair share of issues this morning. Although it is quiet out there right now, we had a pretty major incident along 410 and we're going to get to that story a little bit later on in the newscast, but uh, unfortunately a deadly crash reported overnight and uh, right now though that is cleared out. Highways are open, but still drive safe. Let's get you back on rotation here because although things are pretty uh, foggy out there along 10 at Comfort, everywhere else like back here in town, you could see at 410 State Highway 151 where that crash occurred earlier. Things have cleared out, but we're going to keep a close eye on things throughout GMSA at 9. But if you want to make sure you plan your commute ahead of time, scan that QR code. There are still several active road closures taking place, so make sure to watch out for that cruise. Tapping that QR code will send you directly to our KSAT traffic page. And hey, has a full list of all the current closures that are happening in and around the Alamo City. Stephen, thank you. Merry Christmas. Travel safely, my friend. I will. Thank okay. You. And here's today's 9 at 9. The president of Ukraine is visiting Washington later today. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky will meet with President Biden, who is expected to announce an additional $1.8 billion in security assistance for Ukraine. That will also include Patriot missile systems, which Ukraine has been asking for since Russia has been taking out key infrastructure. The futures of thousands of migrants continue to hang in the balance. They're anxiously awaiting a decision from the Supreme Court on whether to end or uphold Title 42, the policy allowing the U.S. to turn asylum seekers away. The Biden administration has asked the high court to end the measure, but only after the holidays so they can prepare for the influx of migrants. The House Ways and Means Committee voted to release six years of former President Donald Trump's tax returns publicly. 
The decision could have some political blowback, though, because Trump has already declared he's running for president in 2024, and Republicans warned the committee's decision could set a dangerous new precedent. The House Select Committee investigating the U.S. Capitol riots is handing over evidence from its investigation to the Justice Department. They are also set to begin making the transcripts public today, the same day the committee is also expected to release its full final report on the January 6, 2021 attack. A state of emergency declared in California as officials assess the damage from yesterday's 6.4 magnitude earthquake. Two people died from medical emergencies, another dozen were injured, and that number could rise. More than 80 aftershocks have already been reported, and experts say there's now an 11% chance of a quake stronger than magnitude 5 hitting in the next week. A massive and powerful winter storm bearing down on millions of Americans just in time for the holiday travel rush. With tomorrow expected to be the busiest day of the week for air travel, major airlines are already offering waivers for passengers headed through airports in the storm zone. Wells Fargo has agreed to pay $3.7 billion to settle allegations that it charged illegal fees on loans and checking and savings accounts. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau ordered the bank to use $2 billion of that to refund customers. Chemical giant 3M now says it will stop making so-called forever chemicals by 2025. They earned the nickname for how long the chemicals stick around in the environment. Many have been linked to health problems from cancer to low birth weight. For the fourth straight quarter, Federal Express says the number of packages moving through its system has dropped. That's pushing profits for FedEx down 24%. FedEx says it will have to cut costs, including stopping some Sunday deliveries and parking more aircraft. And that's today's Nine at Nine. In your morning headlines, Elon Musk claims to be stepping down, claims to be stepping down as CEO of Twitter, and New York is getting ready for its big New Year's Eve celebration. Erica Hernandez joining us now with those top stories and much more. Good morning, Erica. Hey Thanks guys. for coming in today. Well, good morning. I had to come and interrupt the bro show. I'm, I'm sorry. Glad you did. <laughs> sorry, but I have one for y'all. What do Elon Musk, New Year's Eve, and a time capsule have in common? Ooh, mm. I don't even want to know the punchline to this. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. nothing. Uh, okay. Other than being on your morning headlines, let's first start with Elon Musk and what might be some welcome news for Twitter users. Twitter owner Elon Musk will be stepping down as CEO. It comes as the social media site has been going through some chaos since Musk took over the reins with mass layoffs and policy changes and backlash following the abrupt decision to suspend the accounts of several journalists who cover him. Musk confirmed Tuesday evening evening he will step down but only when he identifies a successor but he did also say he will continue to run the software and servers team at Twitter indicating he may continue to exercise significant influence on the company's decision making next up this video right here that captured this train versus a tractor trailer crash this was in Chattanooga Tennessee check that out that is amazing it's hard to believe though from that video that Two employees for Norfolk Southern only received minor injuries and the tractor trailer driver walked away without any injuries. Once they treated the people, emergency crews returned to keeping the diesel contained. This is the mangled aftermath of the three locomotives and 10 cars that derailed. Officials there say the driver stopped on the tracks waiting for a light on the other side to turn green and that the crossing arms were functional and had been activated. Now, it's hard to believe that we are counting down the days to 2023 and New York City is getting ready. The giant seven foot tall numerals for 2023 have arrived in New York City, New York City. Now, here's something I didn't know. The numbers actually travel to New York from across the country. The coast to coast trip began in Los Angeles and the numerals made stops in Nevada, Tennessee, Washington, D.C. and Pennsylvania for holiday festivities before hitting their final destination in New York. The numbers will be on display through Friday and then workers will place them on top of one Times Square where they will be part of the city's traditional ball, ball drop. A time capsule is giving one New Hampshire couple some sweet memories. David and Allison Prue had once lived and were married in Hawaii while serving in the Marines. They left years ago and recently traveled back to open a time capsule they buried there during their stay. The couple searched for six hours before finally finding their hidden treasure. Some of the items they recovered included a lay, a piece of a uniform, a diaper, I hope it wasn't dirty, and some old photos. Ironic, it's weird, I, you know, I'm sitting on the hillside 
getting this time capsule and it's like Wow, my son, who was six months old then, is now a Marine, yeah. the same rank as I was before I got out. Yeah, and I think just to see where we are at now and how far we've come, it's just neat. I do like it. The Prus hope by sharing their story, they can encourage other people to bury a time capsule of their own. Have you guys ever done that? I did that in junior high with my class, and then we opened it our senior year. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It was really interesting yeah. to see the little... Things we I just random remember. things you put in there. Do you, I remember one that was planted in the floor at North Star Mall. Do you guys remember? Mm. Oh, I don't that? remember that I one. About that. Yeah, yeah, I remember living here a long time ago, and they're like, "This will yeah. be open in 1980 or something, 90 yeah. something," which seems so far away. Yeah. And then it came back then. Yeah, <laughs> and for in this case, all you need is an old ammunition can to make mm. your own time capsule. Yeah. There you go. There you I go. feel like anytime I go back home, it's like a time capsule. I know, which I'll be right? going back this going to your old days, room. Going to my room. Like, oh my God, <laughs> oh. what was I thinking? Yeah, that <laughs> happens a lot as you get older, RJ, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Erica, thank you. Thanks, guys. Good to see you. It's 908, 40 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. If you're still looking for those last minute gifts, well, guess what? We have some suggestions on what to get to help take the holiday stress away. Plus, Good morning. What was your favorite toy as a kid? Maybe it was the Ninja Turtles, the Beanie Babies, some Transformers, or maybe a Superman doll. The Witty has a new exhibit with all of this new and retro toys. We take you there next. Just about 9.13, adults can relive cherished memories from their childhood with retro, retro toys at the latest exhibit at the Witty Museum. Yeah, I was getting really excited just seeing this earlier. Tiffany Huertas joins us live with a look at how these toys reveal how we used to play and that has been around for generations. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning. Let's take a walk down memory lane. Check it out. Right here we have some Play-Doh from 1984. We have some Jacks from the 2000s. And down here we have a whole roll of dolls, different dolls from different eras. And joining right now we have Leslie Ochoa, Director of Collections for the museum. Good morning. Good morning. Talk Tiffany. to us about these dolls. They, okay. They're very special to you. They are. Actually, this is my personal Cabbage Patch doll that I got when I was six years old for Christmas. Um, she was one of my favorites. I named her Rebecca when I adopted her. Um, and the Barbies are also very special. Um, the, the 1960s Barbie was uh, played by a mom and her daughter played with the 1980s Barbie and both Barbies um, growing up. Um, but these are just uh, uh, demonstrate the history of play, how things even if the toys have changed, play hasn't really changed over time. Uh, we actually have a fiber doll uh, that is 4,000 years old, uh, found in Heinz Cave in Val Verde County, um, that demonstrate that play has been universal. It's been around for a long time. Take us around this exhibit. What was the goal behind this? Uh, a little fun, you know, showing, uh, uh, showing that uh, uh, the nostalgic of play and the toys that come with it, um, how things have may have changed uh, materials, um, but uh, uh, the play itself has not changed. Uh, we have great uh, interactive elements in this exhibit, lots to see, lots to do, um, and it's it's a lot. You know, <laughs> all these all these toys are from different families. Talk to us about that. Okay, so a lot of the historic toys are from um, the Witty's permanent collection, um, but some of the more recent nostalgic retro toys are actually on loan to us from uh, Witty staff that have um, kept them through the years um, and may still play with them. And over here, straight ahead, we have one of my favorites, the Tamagotchi <laughs> and the Game Boy. Talk to us about these. Yes. So this section in particular is about how uh, technology has influenced play and the toys that we play with. Um, so the Tamagotchi um, takes, you know, the, the animal care uh, that we pretend play with um, and bring it to the handheld. This exhibit is open until when? Uh, April 2nd. So exciting. Thanks for joining us yeah. this morning and stick around because there's another cool exhibit here about Brackenridge and its history. We're going to give you that in just a little bit. We'll send it back to you. Thank you, Tiffany. Yeah, thank you very much, Tiffany. Take me back to the past there. I mean, talking about time capsules there with those 
Toys taking a look outside now at live cam. Uh, things looking okay right now, a little foggy out there, but yeah. Justin, things are definitely going to take a dip in the temperatures. They will. So tomorrow's the big day, the the big cold front, and I, you know we've we've been talking about it for the better part of a week now. So. I think we're all kind of prepared for it, but in the meantime, you saw the fog trying to set in there. So fog and low clouds, like I said yesterday, they always make things a little difficult, but the fog is now settling in here around San Antonio. We're down to three quarters of a mile at the airport. As I said earlier, I don't suspect this will last all that long, but uh, be prepared for a little bit of fog here and there over the next hour or so here around town. Visibility is down about a mile and a half there at Stinson. And as we zoom out some, it really is kind of just centered over San Antonio at the moment. And as we go outside for you, not as foggy in this picture, so it really is truly patchy around the city. 40 degrees right now, cloudy. Dew point is at 38. Northeasterly winds at about 9 miles per hour. Here's the satellite picture. So we've got some high clouds coming over top of those low clouds and some of that fog. And that's going to make temperatures tricky today. I do think we'll see some peaks of sun later. But in the meantime, that's going to keep things kind of cool. 40 degrees at the airport. 44 Pleasanton, 39 Honda, 34 Kerrville. Kerrville saw some clear skies this morning and that allowed temperatures to really fall there. They were down below freezing for several hours, but here in town we were in the upper 30s and now low 40s. Case had 12 hour forecast. We'll go cloudy next couple of hours. It did lower temperatures just a little bit, just based on what we're seeing right now. 47 noontime and then into the mid 50s this afternoon. We'll call it mostly cloudy. Southerly winds anywhere from 5 to 10 and then temperatures down into the low 50s tonight. <laughs> Uh, with the more clouds as we get into tomorrow morning, but those won't last because that front comes soon and just clears everything out. There's a picture across Texas. No travel issues today, just some high clouds. So if you have plans to go around the state, traveling on any of the interstates should be just fine. It's not until you get up into the northern part of the country that you start to run into some wintry weather and there will be some bigger issues next couple days as this storm system moves east. We've been showing you the numbers almost every morning. It's still bitterly cold and this cold air is now finally on the move and it is starting to push south, starting to push into Nebraska now and that is the leading edge of that cold air that will be here tomorrow. So uh, this is a look at the lows we're expecting Friday morning down to 18 here in San Antonio, 12 Kerrville, 12 Fredericksburg. So that's that change. We're in the 60s midday tomorrow, but then we fall down into the 30s with gusty winds and eventually all the way down to 18, if you can believe that. Uh, and it will be uh, not only that, but windy and cold. So we've got to talk about the wind chill as well. Wind chill values will be in the single digit. Uh, as far as the wind goes, uh, there will be some gusts around 45 miles per hour as we get into tomorrow evening. Gusts to 43 is what this particular model is showing. So those uh, uh, decorations out in your front yard, if you don't have them tethered down, this is a situation where they could end up in your neighbor's yard. Uh, by tomorrow morning or the uh, trash can may go rolling down the street. Uh, just something to keep in mind. Uh, we've been talking about the cold a lot. We haven't necessarily talked about how strong those winds are going to be uh, or at least talked about the impact of those winds. So 62 tomorrow, but falling temperatures and then 18 Friday morning, 35 Friday. We will warm above freezing here in town on Friday with more sun. Keep in mind, though, the whole country likely stays below that mark through Saturday, midday Saturday, before everyone comes back up above freezing there. And Christmas Eve and Christmas Day look good if you like the cold. Cold in the morning, kind of chilly in the afternoon, but not horrible. And then we're back in the 60s by Monday and Tuesday. All right, Justin, what well, goes without saying, many of us are going to be trying to keep warm inside this weekend. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz shows us some safe ways to warm up a room. Safety experts agree you should never use your range or gas oven as a heater. But a new Consumer Report survey found one in five Americans with an annual household income of less than $30,000 and who have a gas range say they used it to heat their home in the past year. Not only is it a fire and burn hazard, but heating an apartment or your home with an oven that's on and open can emit dangerous pollutants and gases into your home. A gas range or oven used for heating rooms can cause a buildup of carbon monoxide in the house. Besides carbon monoxide, Consumer Reports found that gas ranges can emit nitrogen oxide levels that exceed indoor air quality criteria, especially with no ventilation. These gases can worsen asthma and lung diseases and increase the risk of asthma in young children. 
A safer heating option is a space heater, but choose one with an automatic shutoff in case it overheats or tips over, like this model from Comfort Zone. Space heaters should be at least three feet from anything that burns, like bedding or draperies. Extension cords in space heaters are a bad mix. The space heater should be plugged directly into the wall. Also, turn off and unplug a space heater when you leave, and never leave it on while you're sleeping. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Now, if you are struggling to pay your utility bill, there is help available. And it's called the Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program. We have a link on our website, ksat.com, if you'd like more information. 921, 41 degrees. The big cold front our weather team has been talking about comes at the same time that holiday travel is picking up. When we come back, a look at the conditions in the north and what experts advise you to do if your flight is canceled or maybe even delayed. Just shy of 925. Welcome back. Take a look at some of the conditions up north. Heavy snow blowing sideways in the drifts in many areas. Yeah, unbelievable. And as Justin just mentioned, this massive winter storm is now on the move and it's threatening to impact the travel of millions of Americans. ABC's Gio Benitez has some tips that could save your trip. This morning, that holiday storm wreaking havoc on travel plans for the 102 million Americans traveling by road and air, with airlines already canceling and delaying flights even before the storm hits. But there are ways to make sure that travel Scrooge doesn't win out. First things first, travel waivers that could help you move your existing flight in order to beat the storm. Airlines are letting you make free changes, but you've got to act fast. It could even mean that fare increases will be covered if you choose a different flight, but that's for specific routes and dates. So you need to make sure you're checking with the airline you're flying to see what their specific policy covers. If your flight gets canceled, you are entitled to a refund if you choose not to take a rescheduled flight. But if you want to try to hop on another flight, timing is critical. To avoid long customer service phone calls, try calling an airline's international number. But you may already be able to make the change yourself. Automation is your friend. Use the app or the website that you booked your travel in and go ahead and see what your rebooking options are. You can call but those wait times are going to be long. And if your cancellation has nothing to do with the weather and is the airline's fault, like a mechanical issue, you are entitled to a hotel and meals if your new flight is much later. It's a part of your bill of rights as a paying traveler. Generally speaking, airlines are required to provide refunds if they cancel the flight and no reasonable alternatives are offered. That said, the airlines want to help you get where you need to go. So they're going to work with you, especially this week. That was ABC's Gio Benitez reporting, and I already got a notification from Southwest saying just to be aware of all these potential delays going out there. And that's, for, now. And that's for an in-state flight. Going to El Paso. Yeah. yeah. So wow. already kind of thinking ahead to that. Well, airlines try to be proactive. It just yeah. doesn't always work out yeah. in the end, does it? Uh, hopefully it does. Safe travels. <laughs> All right. 927, 41 degrees. Yeah, there's still a lot more this morning on Good Morning San Antonio at 9 a.m., including the latest here on whether or not the Cowboys are going to get OBJ and what Jerry Jones is saying about the situation. Plus, will Jalen Hurts play or not against Dallas? We have a pretty good theory about that. After the break, the latest along the border, especially in El Paso, where the mayor is preparing for whatever happens with the end of Title 42. Back at 930 on your Wednesday morning anticipation along the border line. Title 42, the policy allowing the U.S. to turn asylum seekers away at the border was set to expire today, but the U.S. Supreme Court put all that on hold. The Biden administration responded to the high court asking it to reject a bid by 19 Republican led states, including Texas, to keep the measure in place. ABC's Morgan Norwood is at the border in El Paso with more. This morning, the futures of tens of thousands of migrants continue to hang in the balance as they flock here to the border. They are anxiously awaiting a Supreme Court decision that could allow them to enter the U.S. This morning, mounting uncertainty over Title 42. It comes as the legal challenges over the pandemic era policy allowing the U.S. to turn away asylum seekers continues to play out. 
the Supreme Court putting the rollback on hold and the Biden administration asking the high court to reject a bid by 19 GOP-led states to keep the policy in place. With the decision on what comes next down to the wire, pressure is building in El Paso, where the mayor says shelters are already packed to the brim. We want to make sure that we're prepared. We've heard that numbers are really big in uh, Mexico, right now in waters, and uh, there's probably over 20,000 over there today that are waiting for Title 42 to be lifted. While it's clear migrants are still coming in and in large numbers, the surge appears to be waning, at least in the El Paso area for now. According to the Department of Homeland Security, the number of migrant crossings has dropped to 1,500 per day. That's down from 2,500 at one point earlier this month. Still, the Texas National Guard beefing up security along the border, hundreds of troops on the ground, wire fencing, Humvees surrounding that area. Title 42 has emerged as a hot button political debate, with many Republicans and some Democrats arguing that it's critical to border control, while immigration advocates and most Democrats say it undercuts the asylum system. This couple from Venezuela tell me they journeyed through five countries and the dangerous Darien Gap in order for a chance at refuge from their violence and poverty torn homeland, saying, We want to offer a bright future for our kids. Should the Supreme Court lift Title 42 restrictions, the Biden administration wants it to stay in place until at least after the holidays. It just buys them a little extra time to prepare. And on that front, officials here in El Paso say they've identified two vacant schools that could serve as temporary shelters. I'm Morgan Norwood, ABC News, El Paso, Texas. Back here in San Antonio, outside with live cam, 41 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. Looks like the clouds have dropped a bit since the early morning newscast. Plenty cold out there. Where are the biggest travel trouble spots the next couple of days, Justin? It's a great question. It's not going to be here. As we've said, Texas is going to be just fine. But you go up north and that's where you're going to run into snow, ice, and likely it's going to snarl traffic a little bit when it comes to air traffic uh, and airport delays are going to be around uh, for much of the country uh, just because of chain reactions and that sort of thing. So let's look at the travel impacts as you get up into places like Kansas today, Nebraska, Minneapolis. That's where you're going to start to see the snow shifting in a little bit later and that will cause some issues. This all moves east as we get into tomorrow. Chicago, uh, the Midwest, the Great Lakes, that's going to cause a lot of issues. Chicago, obviously a major hub and there could be blizzard like conditions there by tomorrow and then the northeast gets hit by this as we get into friday so again check ahead with your flights uh, because this could be fairly widespread this is today through friday just kind of a wider look and you see it's the northern half of the country uh, where there will be issues pollen count is in molds are low as we thought they would they came down 190 mountain cedar is low all bets are off tomorrow though those northerly winds kick in mount cedar likely jumps up visibility is still down around the airport uh, Stinson and Kerrville. Those are the three areas where there still is a little bit of fog and the forecast for today. We do expect that the sun will at least try to come out for a while this afternoon, uh, but still lots of clouds, more clouds and sun 55 degrees, your high temperature and then tonight falling into the uh, 50s and eventually 40s and then some warmth tomorrow before that front hits. So it's not going to be an all day thing. It doesn't arrive until the afternoon, but we'll take another look at the timing on that front and take uh, one more look at some precautions you can take coming up. Thank you very much, Justin, and a lot of people keeping their eyes on the weather with Christmas just days away. But have you finished your holiday shopping or are you still scrambling to find those last minute gifts? Well, no worries. ABC's Rena Roy has some last minute gift ideas to help take that stress away. Christmas Day is almost here. There's always a little bit of panic that sets in if you don't have a gift yet. You could run out and buy something, yes, but that's kind of why we invented the Internet. When it comes to last-minute gift giving, CNET uh, editorial director Dan Ackerman require. says to opt Official for a digital gift. And it's, you know, just as good and often better received than something physical that maybe you don't want and you have to return. There are many types of subscription services that can still be a meaningful present. A lot of the uh, digital subscription-based gifts you would get for people would be a subscription to a service either they already have or one that they want to get, whether it's Netflix or Hulu or, you know, Xbox Game Pass. So things that are not physical, but you still get to use them, you know, month after month. You can also buy a subscription box service so your loved one receives physical items in a box each month. There are all sorts of subscription boxes from beer to makeup or books. 
You can also surprise them with a familiar face. My other last minute gift, and it might take a couple of days to get to it, is, is a really fun service called Cameo, where celebrities, mostly B-list to Z-list, will record a personal greeting for your friends or family. If you're looking for a last minute deal, one I have seen that's pretty good is a service called Masterclass, which is like an online collection of classes, but from very famous, very high end people. It's pretty expensive. It's $180 for the year. But right now, if you buy somebody a gift membership, you can get your own membership for free. So it's basically two for one. And that at least makes it a little easier. And if you're really down to the wire, you can get a digital gift card sent to your loved one's email inbox in minutes. Rena Roy, ABC News, Los Angeles. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. All right, Justin's on board here. Before we get to Cowboys Eagles, we'll talk about the loss of a great one today for the NFL. That's right, Mark. Franco Harris passes away at the age of 72. The iconic Pittsburgh Steelers running back four-time Super Bowl champion, Hall of Famer. Uh, my grandfather's actually a big fan of the Steelers, so yeah, thinking about Franco this morning and his family. And the 50th anniversary mm -hmm. of the Immaculate Reception was coming up. They're going to retire his... Number 32 jersey. Right. And That was uh, already planned before his death. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that's actually going to be the Raiders taking on the Steelers on yeah. Christmas Day. So, tough loss there for all of the Pittsburgh Steeler nation around the country. No cause of death list to get Franco Harris dead at 72. All right, let's jump right into Cowboys Eagles, and there's a lot to talk about here, including what I consider to be a giant distraction, considering oh what's going on on the field right now and the tall yeah. task ahead for the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, and we're talking about the possibility of signing wide, a free agent wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. And now that belief is that it's kind of dwindling a little bit after it was kept alive by Cowboys owner Jerry Jones. But yesterday, Jones faced the fact that that window is actually closing for this season. All right, so I guess Jerry talked about this on a podcast? On one of his many radio hits yeah <laughs> podcast I mean who knows what, he would, just talks for it would OBJ really help the situation for the Cowboys I mean I think he actually would detract from what they have right now that's mm. hard to say let's listen to Jerry real quick as of this morning we don't have anything but uh, I, I don't have an assessment the reality is though that we're uh, time is uh, moving on down the road relative to being uh, uh, relative to uh, uh, playing uh, in uh, the uh, playoffs, and so uh, the, the every day uh, diminishes our chances of getting uh, going forward. Jerry, mm. oh Jerry, Jerry, <laughs> Jerry, Jerry. Right, so, Jerry yeah, speak, yeah. Worry about next year, next year, I say. Yeah, I, and you mentioned, you brought up a good point because yeah. Dallas's offense has been playing pretty well. Uh, still some issues with Dak mm -hmm. and Michael Gallup, uh, kind of, and their chemistry, but I don't know if at this point it's worth bringing him in to kind of throw off the entire offense. And I still think there's a decent chance that Odell will wind up right back in New York with the Man, Giants. I think yeah. so, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. All right, we also talked about what's going to happen this weekend. Eagles, uh, one of the... Uh, arguably the inarguably the best players in the NFL especially the NFC this year and that would be that man Jalen Hurts yeah potential MVP candidate right here Jalen Hurts a Philly of course playing the Cowboys Christmas Eve in this big NFC East showdown now Hurts is questionable right now he suffered a sprain to his throwing shoulder when he was driven into the ground in the third quarter of the Eagles win over the Bears all right so here's the deal both those teams <laughs> have already clinched right yeah. so if I was the Eagles I would sit Jalen anyway. This game essentially does not matter to either team, in my opinion. Justin, your thoughts? Same I agree. Guys. I mean, mm -hmm. it, yeah, you don't want to, because it doesn't matter, right? That you're not going to yeah. risk getting Jalen hurt, though. No. Yeah, yeah, you need the Eagles to lose their last three games and the Cowboys to win the last three games of the season in order for Dallas to jump over Philly and win the division title. But also maybe some strategy here. <laughs> maybe the Eagles know that they may face the Cowboys in the playoffs it's, and uh, it's, they're it's, thinking to themselves, maybe we just sit Jalen for this one. It's possible. Fantasy, let's, fantasy let's, football, too. Oh, man, don't <laughs> talk to me about that. Let's listen to the Eagles head coach, Nick Sirianni. I do not put it past Jalen Hurts. I don't put anything past Jalen Hurts um, as far as his mental and physical toughness. So there's a chance he could play this week. And so um, he is one of the toughest guys I know. Um, and he heals fast. He's a freak. Total coach speak there. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't think he's going to play. No way. I think they're going to probably sit him out. It's, again, we have a long ways to go to the game. 
Still could be a fun game, guys. Uh, Saturday, 325, Eagles, Cowboys. And, yeah, we'll see how things go. Phillies 13-1 right now. Of course, Minnesota 11-3, San Francisco 10-4. Mm -hmm. And for Dallas, I think, yeah, they could win or lose this game. I think they will win their final two games of the regular season. They've got to take on Tennessee mm -hmm. yeah. at Tennessee, and then they wrap up the season at Washington against the Commanders. And if they won both of those games, will they host – a playoff no, game? that's the thing is that Dallas, if they do not win the division, they're going to be locked into the five seed and most likely going to Tampa Bay first round, take on Tom Brady and the mm. Bucks. And who knows the way Tampa and Brady have been playing this year, yeah. how that game yeah. would go. Yeah. Right, guys? True. Yeah. Very right, true. Justin, thanks for joining us. Yeah, of course. <laughs> All right. Love talking sports with the guys. 942, 41 degrees. And you're watching GMSA at 9 o'clock. A new exhibit here at the Whitty Museum focuses on Brackenridge Park. Coming up next, we take a look at what's next for Brackenridge and what you can find right here. And we're back in 945. An exhibit at the Whitty Museum explores the story of Brackenridge Park through maps, photos, and artifacts. Yeah, this is really cool. Tiffany Huertas shows us how the park has changed over time. Up to 12,000 years ago, people were settling here, meeting here, gathering on the riverside. Um, and people still do today. The Landis exhibit at the Whitty Museum dives deep into the history of Brackenridge Park. It's mostly um, from the early 20th century. We can see here the, the bear pit at the zoo, at the bison before um, when they were on the land that is now the golf course. Chief creative officer for the Whitty Museum, Beth Stryker, takes us around the exhibit titled Brackenridge, San Antonio's acclaimed urban park based on this book by Lewis F. Fisher. The book is, and the exhibit are both divided into three parts. So the ancient history, the first people, the natural history, the, even the geology of the park, um, and then the shaping of the park and how it was founded, the land transfer from George Brackenridge, and then the modern park, what it is today and where it's going in the future. Artifacts tell the story of the area. But we also have two cases here. Um, one case is a natural history case where you'll see animals and plants that are related to the park. And we have another one with historic items, so um, an ostrich egg from the zoo. The exhibit showcases different images from the past, including this reptile garden at the Whitty Museum in 1937 to back here, this 1948 miniature rail line. But the exhibit also sparks the question, what's next for Brackenridge? This holiday season, explore the diverse layers of the park. The exhibit is open until March. Brackenridge Park is, of course, a treasured part of San Antonio. A lot of families have really intimate connections with the space, um, but it has a really long history. And so both the book and the exhibit dive into that history layer by layer. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. All right, we got some Game of Thrones vibes going on here with Winter is Coming. Oh, I, like that. That. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could show, you know, show my <laughs> socks. It's the Game That's of Thrones right. Christmas Inspired socks. by Mark's I can't, I don't have the flexibility <laughs> to show you folks. Just trust me. I, yeah. I forgot I even had them. Make it happen. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Maybe post it later on social media. <laughs> yeah, well, I can set my loafer up here, but nobody cares. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, yes, winter winter is here officially. Yes. You're, you're uh -huh. right. Uh, today is the winter solstice, and then tomorrow it will be like winter. So this is all timing out perfectly. Uh, let's first start with the visibility, though, because we do have some issues with that. The fog's still around. The visibility's dropped um, pretty far down at the airport, down to about a tenth of a mile or so. And that is the worst visibility we see on the map. Uh, Kerrville's down a quarter of a mile, Stinson about a mile and a half. Other than that, there isn't actually a lot of fog out there. And as we look at live cam, you can see a hint of that uh, there at uh, 410 and I-10. Temperatures right now, 39 degrees at the airport, 42 Stinson, 41 Kelly, 41 at Randolph. Temperatures actually dropped a little bit at the airport. Uh, we do have some of that fog and low cloudiness that's spreading in from the east. And then we have high clouds over top of that. So it's going to be kind of a mixed bag today. I do think we'll see at least a few peaks of sun in spots around the area today. But in general, another mostly cloudy day. 43 degrees, New Braunfels, 35 Kerrville, 39 Hondo, 50. Carissa Springs in Catula, a little warmer down there. And around Bear County, 42 Stinson, 41 Port SA, 42 right now in Holotus. Your case had 12 hour forecast. Noontime 47, and then by the afternoon, uh, just because temperatures are, are holding at the moment, we've dropped the numbers a little bit. So mid 50s, uh, and there could be some spots that are a little cooler than that. Pretty similar to yesterday. Uh, and then 51 by 8 p.m. as uh, we get ready for that blast of Arctic air. It is now officially on the move. 
Casper, temperatures are dropping there. Negative two, if you remember, we showed you a few hours ago was in the 20s there. So there you go. Uh, the cold air is now pushing south at a pretty good clip. We suspect it will be here by tomorrow morning. Listen to the hill country and then San Antonio sometime just after lunch. Temperatures will make a dramatic drop from 60s down to 30s by the evening. Gusts to 45 miles per hour behind the front and a wind chill will be in place as soon as Thursday afternoon. And as we look at the weather timeline here for tomorrow, uh, 61 by noontime, but then we drop off to 42 by 4 p.m., 26 by 8 o'clock. By midnight, we're down to 23 with those gusty winds, especially, especially tomorrow evening. Then we drop all the way down to 18 here in town by Friday morning, 12 Kerrville, 12 Fredericksburg. I mean, this is some very, very cold air. That is the uh, kind of cold that you do have to take some precautions as we've been talking about. Now, this is not going to be like 2021. We've talked about that extensively, but just a quick reminder, uh, pets, bring them indoors. Plants, you'll want to water Wednesday, cover sensitive plants and bring in potted plants. And you'll probably want to do that tonight or tomorrow morning. Uh, as far as pipes are concerned, you want to insulate exposed pipes. So, you know, the spigots. Uh, you can drip faucets. Uh, hopefully we won't have a, a huge issue around here, but uh, it is something we need to watch. And then, of course, people check in on those without central heating. And we got to stay warm. Check in on your neighbor. Uh, 62 tomorrow, 35 Friday. That will be the high after starting off at 18. 40 on Saturday, 51 on Sunday with some cold mornings. Christmas morning will be cold, 22, but we make it up to 51 by the afternoon and then 60 Monday and Tuesday. And I'm not one to preach to people, but I, I do want to remind also space heaters. We've got to be so careful every year. You know, we, we have fires. If you have an old space heater, you may just want to toss it. And if you are going to use a space heater, keep it away from the curtains and mm -hmm. anything, any sort of cloth or anything like that that can ignite. And no extension cords, anything like that. By Correct. the way, if you really want to see the Game of Thrones socks I'm wearing, <laughs> I just posted on my KSAP Facebook page, KSAP Mark Austin. Yeah, they are definitely uh, impressive. Here. Yeah, they're right. Yeah, pretty they're awesome. Very nice there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it is 951 and we have crept over the 40 degree line. We're now at 41 degrees on this Wednesday. Be right back. We'll be right back. Our teachers are our true heroes. I'm Sarah Costa coming up tomorrow on GMSA. We head to Idea South Florida's introduce you to KSAT's Educator of the Month. What keeps this teacher motivated despite the challenges? Don't forget the city and county will have warming centers open to those who need somewhere to go during this Arctic blast. The list of warming centers is on your screen. Opens tomorrow at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Anyone going to the center should probably take some extra clothes, supplies, and of course any medications you might need. There will be kennels available for pets, but only at three locations. The Normoyle, Southside Lion, and Garza centers. All this information is there for you on KSAT.com. And Saws is reminding customers to be ready for the temperature drop. They have winterized, winterized their facilities and will have staff working 24 seven throughout the city to respond to any problems. But customers still need to protect their pipes and faucets. You can also store tap water in clean containers in any case of outages. And in case you do freeze, your, your pipes do freeze, Saws has tutorials on how to turn your water off at the meter. You can find all of this information on our website, ksat.com. You know, my grass is still a little bit green, still have some flowers blooming, not after tomorrow because that cold front beans business, we, we usually ease into a freeze. This is not going to be the case. We're going from not having a freeze all the way down to 18 Friday morning. Okay. Thank you, Justin. Yes. Thanks for watching. Have a great morning.